Hello again, I am Blunty, and this, well, this is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. Not at nine centimeters tall. The original arcade machine released into the world in 1989, and it was just under 1.9 meters tall, making this somewhere close to 120th in scale. Someone should check my math on that. I, I don't math well. It's from a company rather appropriately called Tiny Arcade, who have a wide selection of similar miniature reproductions of various arcade classics. But I have a deep nostalgic connection and several wonderful memories directly tied to this arcade game in particular. So when my similarly turtle nostalgic mate brought my attention to it, I pre-ordered it immediately. Obviously, it's not actually a scale replica. I'm sure the marquee and the side panel prints are reasonably accurate to the original arcade machine, but clearly the base to deck size, its spacing from floor to deck, the coin door and screen size are all wildly off what they should be for a properly scaled replica. But it's enough to sell the idea of the thing, and that's fine. It's not a collector's item, it's a novelty. I do also like that the marquee lights up like it should. Little detail, much joy. There were two main variations of the original arcade cabinet, a two-player one and a four-player one. Exactly the same game, but with the two-player one, you could manually select what turtle you wanted to play as from either control, while the four-player cabinets had specific turtles tied to specific controller positions on the control deck, which, to small delight, were also color-coded to the turtles in question. For obvious reasons, this is a single-player-only unit. And even then, the ergonomics and serviceability of the tiny, tiny controls are, well, let's choose some kind words and say slightly impractical. But they do at least work properly and reasonably well considering the comedic size. The joystick, such as it is, has a nice, solid, mildly tactile click in all four directions. The buttons also have very solid clicks on activation, and I've not opened this thing up, but I'd be surprised if they weren't some variation of the standard surface mount tact switch. I certainly feel a lot like those. The screen itself is a small 1.5 inch LCD. Annoyingly, it's mounted vertically, which means this horizontally formatted game is pointlessly letterboxed top and bottom. The screen is very low resolution, but of course, so is the game, so that's fine. It's reasonably bright, the colours resolve cleanly enough, and the bottom firing speaker is actually pretty good for something this size, a clean, distortion-free sound, at a volume reasonable for something like this. And the print quality for the panels and marquee stickers is okay. But to be fair, even the original arcade cabinets weren't especially clean or clear with their graphics. They too were surprisingly low resolution for a print of their size. Interesting to note too that the Konami logo has been removed from these original graphics as Konami no longer have the distribution rights for this game as they did when it was originally released. Now, as for the game itself, it's crap. The original game is pretty great, and in fact ran on a game engine that was so solid it was also used for other high-profile licensed beat-em-ups like the X-Men arcade game and the Simpsons arcade game. And each one of those games had several different ports and conversions to various home consoles and computers. But this? This is unlike any version of the game I have ever played. It is absolutely not the arcade ROM. It is absolutely not any of the home PC ports like the Amiga or Atari ST. It's not the Nintendo port. I haven't checked, but I rather suspect it's a new port, some kind of ground up quick and dirty copycat remake commissioned specifically for this kind of toy. While the sprites, many audio cues and stage panels all look more or less identical to the real game, at least at a glance, there is a lot of differences here that are immediately obvious to anyone who enjoyed this game in any of its original forms. Some are just simple audio or visual shifts, but the largest and worst are the gameplay ones. There are no special attacks, no throws. Not even the basic control scheme is the same. You have two attack buttons instead of one, and each attacks left and right respectively. Weird choice, but probably stems from the fact they use some sort of standardized four-button control deck for a bunch of these different units. So maybe they just didn't want to have one button that does nothing. But whoever was responsible for this port, or remake as it is, or whatever, obviously never played the original properly, and certainly has no love for it or its place in arcade history, because this is very, very far from faithful. 
and it only gets more disappointing from there. Gone is the iconic theme song for the original cartoon, which sadly I'll not risk playing for you here as I'm absolutely sure it'll snag YouTube's copyright bots and get me in trouble. But in this version of the game, the wonderful classic music is instead replaced with some insipid generic crap. Licensing issues, I expect. But that's okay. You can actually just turn off the music. The original game has all four turtles, of course. And they actually played differently. They weren't just differently coloured sprites. Donatello had slower attacks, but a huge reach with his bow staff. Michelangelo and Raphael were the opposite. Very fast attack, but very, very short range. And Leo was a balance. In this version of the game, you only play as Donatello. And he absolutely does not play like he should. No throws, no slams, no special, and although the way the game plays makes it hard to tell, I don't even think his range is right. The game also only contains three of the original stages. But, aside from the wildly inaccurate gameplay, and very shitty port, as you can see, the game plays at a miserably pathetic frame rate anyway. Now yes, of course, of course, this is just a novelty. It's a toy, a piece of nostalgia bait for us Gen Xers. It was never designed or intended to be a device to fully enjoy a classic arcade game on. And that's why I purchased it. I have other ways, better ways, to play the original game, and I even have a little control deck with actual arcade joysticks and button hardware on it for exactly this purpose, so I can play these games how they were meant to be played. But that doesn't mean I can't be sad about the inaccuracies, the laziness, the cut corners, and the shitty performance here. To give it a fair go, it is only 20 bucks or so, and of course I only purchased it for the novelty and nostalgia value itself, and I always intended for it to be simply a little trinket for the shelf, maybe a cute prop for some videos. And to that end, I wish there was a way to stop it automatically turning off. It's powered by three AAA batteries, I knew that of course, it's in the listing for the item on the store, but I intended to wire up a little USB power supply to it so I could just leave it on permanently, in silent mode, and just let it stay lit and let the game's attract mode run. A little mini arcade cabinet sitting in the corner, ticking away. But it doesn't actually play the attract mode from the original game. After a quick splash screen, it just goes to the basic settings screen and then automatically shuts off after about a minute. And even if I dive into the game and wanted to leave it on an empty game screen for an idle animation, it won't stay on without constant controller inputs. Not even simply just holding down one of the buttons will keep it on. It has to be active constant inputs. So that's my biggest disappointment with it. It's not the crappiness of the game, it's not how awkward it is to play with the Dini Tandy controls, it's because I just can't let it run in attract mode. Big sad face pity. But as a $20 novelty toy, I still like it. It's cute. It's fun, and it triggers within me the many fond memories of my childhood down the back of the video store where I pumped coin after coin into this game and its contemporaries, weekend after weekend after weekend. And also fond memories of my 21st birthday party, where my friends and I gathered around and celebrated my completion of my own custom-designed and hand-built four-player arcade emulator cabinet and played this game and many more deep through a drunken night of joy. I think it was probably my best birthday ever, actually. So yeah, this thing is pretty crappy objectively, but also very, very wonderful subjectively. And I'm okay with that. So thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time. And as always, thank you to the patrons scrolling up above there. Your extra support means a ton to me, and I wish you a deep and abiding cowabunga to you all. Cowabunga!